And this stuff started way back in the Bible. Uh, I'm reminded of King David. We all know David, 23rd Psalm. Great man of God after God's own heart. In the biblical days, you could have more than one wife, and we know the trouble he got in. I love David dearly. It's hard for me to even talk about him because he's been such a blessing in my life. But we know the day that uh, he was on the balcony and he was looking at a woman bathing by the name of Bathsheba. And from what the Bible says, this babe put the iron in fine. <laughs> she put the ice in nice. But the Bible lets you and I know as men and as women, if your left arm calls you to sin, do what? Not to physically cut it off, but if you're looking at somebody and all of a sudden it goes to a higher level, somebody say, shut the curtain. Yeah, shut the curtain. Shift your mind. Jesus said, you've heard you sin when you commit adultery, but I say you sin when you think about it. In other words, he says, get your mind off the page, man, because if you keep reading the menu, you go order something. And he's telling you now, six second rule, okay? Okay, you passed six seconds. Now you looked at her, ain't nothing wrong with saying, man, that's a nice looking woman. But after six seconds, you're saying, man, I wonder what it'd be like. <laughs> that's when you cross the line, amen? amen? You didn't cast down your imagination. And in David's case, and if it can happen to David, it can show sure happen to you and me. Next thing you know, he sent for the woman. Next thing you know, bumping and grinding. Or do I need to turn my back? I got some children in here today. <laughs> but let me say it like the world says, oh, we slept together. How much have heard that term? And wasn't no sleeping going on that night. What are you talking about you slept together? That's the way the devil does it. Oh, we just slept together. And the angels are saying, God, I'm looking at this, but there ain't no sleeping going on. I see some clear heels. <laughs> now, after he sleeps with the woman, praise God, the woman gets pregnant. And now he's in a world of trouble because she didn't slept with this man the first time. The woman then got pregnant. David says, what can I do? Sends for her husband, Uriah. Hey, man, I got your sweet at the hide, man. And I'm paraphrasing this part. I know you ain't been with your girl in a long time, man. I got you some dumb Perignon, man. I got you some strawberries. I know how she likes strawberries. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> how you know she likes strawberries, David? <laughs> Go on and be with her. Uriah said, man, I can't be with my wife right now. We out here fighting for you, man. And all my brothers are out here on the front line. How am I going to be with my wife? And, 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 and we're fighting for you, David. And David said, my plan didn't work. So the next thing he does, and oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. He has this brother sent to the front line in the war yes. and tells the captain to retreat on him. You've heard me say a lot of times people say they got your back, but when trouble comes, that's what I'm talking about. That's way back. So Uriah dies. David quickly marries Bathsheba. You ever seen some people go out of the frying pan to the skillet? I mean, they, yes. husband and wife pass and next month they get married again. They say, wait a minute. I've heard stuck on stupid stuff like the best way to get over one man is to get with a, another one. These people out there think like this. So after Uriah dies and, and Nathan comes to David and tells a sheep story about a man who, who, who had, had, had one family sheep and the children used to sleep with the sheep. They loved the sheep and, 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 and the one is just, this rich man came by and said, that's the sheep I want to eat today. And he took his sheep. And, 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 and David said, anybody that would do something like that deserves death. And you know what Nathan said? You are that man. That's exactly what you did to Uriah's wife. And then obviously David repented. 
and we never hear about that happening again. He asked God to create in him a clean heart and renew in him the right spirit. And he said, I'll teach transgressors your ways. I'll let everybody know you don't want to go through what I went through. Fifteen minutes of pleasure can cost you a lifetime of pain. Not me. I got pills. I can go for four hours. God didn't create it for four hours, my brother. And we need to come back, y'all, to our senses and get some self-control on things that God created. The devil going to always try to exploit them and, and, and take something that God made for good and turn it into something bad. God is saying that even though he forgives us, there are consequences to sexual disobedience. So David marries Uriah, I mean David marries Bathsheba, the baby died, because God said no. David prayed for the baby to live, but God had already made up his mind. And that God said to David through Nathan, Nathan, you already had more than one wife, man. And if you wanted another wife, all you had to do is ask God. He would have gave it to you. But you got to go take somebody else's. And then we fast forward to the next generation. David's got more than one wife. He had a son by the name of Amnon. And Amnon was looking at his little stepsister, Tamar. And I hate to see men looking at beautiful young children with them lustful eyes, y'all. But it happens in the world, and that's why you got to protect your children at all costs. You can't leave your children with any and everybody just because they got a dollar or two. I mean, I look at little Jamie out here. She's just a growing up, and she's a beautiful young girl, but we can't, we can't afford to let nothing happen to Jamie, praise God, just because some uh, lustful man whispering at her. Amen. We got to protect these babies. Amnon, looking at his stepsister, she's a princess. She's got on a prince's robe. Life is great. She wake up, she's got servants, and all of a sudden, as she's got these servants, she gets a request from her dad, David. This was a request. Her brother Amnon was, uh, had been told by Jonadab, his cousin, and this is how this stuff happens in families, praise God. Uh, 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 somebody usually perpetrates this stuff. Male or man, why are you lusting after your little sister like this? This is what you do. Tell your dad that, that you're sick, but tell her to send your little sister, your little stepsister over to bring you some food. It's been concocted. And this is what happens to a lot of children in the world we live in today. And God has an abomination against this. God says it's better for a millstone to be tied around your neck and for you to be thrown into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to lose their faith. And as, can't you see Tamar saying, why in the world would he want me to bring him some food? He's got servants, you know, uh, (laughs) And, but she's trusting in her dad. You know, dad telling me to do this. So dad, if you're telling me to do this, I guess I'll do it. So she gets there, and, and, and as soon as she gets there with the food, uh, Amnon tells all the servants, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out. Come on in, uh, uh, Tamar, and, 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 and feed me my food. And as soon as she comes in, this low life, and I say it alive, anybody, who would do anything to any one of these children is a low life. And they better ask God for forgiveness and go and sin no more. And thank God that he will forgive them if they confess their sins. As soon as she comes in, he rapes his own stepsister. And as soon as he finished doing his business, all of his lust for her turns to hatred. Get out of my face. I can't stand you. And she had pleaded with him, please don't do this. 
this thing. Don't defile my life. Don't do this. Even as your, your father, our father, maybe he would do something. But he refused all logic and put her on a course that potentially forever changed her life. But I'm here to tell you today, y'all, that no matter what has happened in the past, there's no pain God cannot heal. Do I have one witness with me today? There's no hurt that he can't feel. And if you take it to the Lord, praise God, not only will he heal you, but you will become whole. Amen. Well, what's the difference? When you're whole, you grow up like a Joyce Meyer. And when the enemy try to put shame in your past, you take what the enemy meant for bad and don't just make good out of it, but you turn it into something great. And I'm thankful to God for people like that today, praise God, that give me the courage, praise God. When something happened to me, I'll stand up and speak about it and let everybody know there's no pain God can't heal. There's no hurt he can't feel. And he will take you through that experience and you will be able to share your testimony and understand what it really means when God chooses the weak things to confound the strong. He chooses ordinary people to do extraordinary things for them. And I look at this, this, this picture. We got 35 women sitting in a seat. Oh, uh, this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me. How does it go on and on and on and on and on and on and on to the break of dawn? But not nobody saying nothing. It's because we got too many people wanting to impress people yeah. and not enough people wanting to influence people. See, you impress people from a distance. They don't really know you. They know of you. Because all they can see you from afar off. Oh, she looked like she got it all together. Ain't nothing happening to her life. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. But you influence people when you can show them your scars and say, I am strong in a previously broken place. Because the potter has put me back together again. And that's what real ministry is all about. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the words of our testimony. But how can they hear if you got your mouth shut? How can they hear without a preacher? And we've all have a testimony. We've all gone through something. But we got too many secret agents, Christians. Got too many churches chickens. That's somebody else's job, not mine. But God is saying, what if you were born? For such a time as this. And when one person had the courage to come out about what had happened by this producer, what happened next? Another person came out. What happened there? Another person came out. And what happened? Another person came out. And another person came out. And then one of the actors said, we're going to do a website. And everybody that has something happen to them, put it on the website, praise God. And they just start coming out the woodwork. This happened to me. This happened to me. This happened to me. Male and female. And God is saying, that's what it's all about. The only thing necessary for evil to prosper is for good people to do nothing, say nothing. And God is saying it's time, y'all, that we deal with these issues that have been affecting men and women from generation to generation. Yes. Men need to understand that no means no. And women have to understand that there are certain things that we, a women can do that can at least help the situation, amen? amen? He's already said what makes you special in his sight. It's not your hair. It's great to have nice hair. God wants you to enjoy your hair. 
It's not, it's not your jewelry, praise God. And we got folks that love jewelry, but how much know if you walking around in public with an 18 karat diamond ring home? You got somebody at a different season of their life, you know, they're in a desperate state, say, man, I was hoping that some way I'd be able to pay my bill, and all of a sudden she just shows up. <laughs> That's the way some people think. You at the grocery store just paying your bills. And all of a sudden, you pull out a wide of hundreds to pay your bills. <laughs> Somebody at a different season of their life, oh, man, this is the burden that's on the ground. <laughs> she pulled out thousands of dollars right before me. And if you get robbed, yes, he was wrong for robbing you. Yes, she was wrong for robbing you. But you got to also look at the man or the woman in the mirror. And no message could be any clearer. If we want to make the world a better place, somebody say, take a look at yourself and make the change. If you can receive it, give God praise today. Father, our hearts are joyfully grateful for all you've done. Every victory won because of the gift of your son. We hear you loud and clear asking us to be willing to be used by you, yes. Yes. irregardless of what short-term pain yes. it may seem like it will bring. Yes. Father, we thank you that when you come into our life, you not only heal us, but you make us whole. Yes. W, somebody say, washed in the blood of Jesus. Blood We're so Jesus. thankful. H, somebody say, healed by Jesus' stripes. Jesus. Oh, the omnipotent power of God works through my life. L, the life changing, burden removing, yoke destroying, old habit breaking, new habit making, power of God makes me a new creation. E, everlasting life is my inheritance. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Give God a praise offering. Amen.